I'm here to give you an overview of one of the set products on your EDUCAS A-Level Media Studies Component 1 paper, namely the February 22 front page and double page spread of the Daily Mirror, the one that features Boris Johnson. I'm going to talk to you about where this falls in the course and the kind of questions you might be expected to answer on the exam. You could, as was the case as recently as summer 2024, be asked to analyse an unseen newspaper front page. So the knowledge of conventions and the accompanying media language terminology that you'll develop in studying this front page is key. Alternatively, you might be asked to compare any of the representations constructed by the mirror with the representations in an unseen moving image text. That would, of course, be the 30 mark representation question. And for that, you might be asked to write uh, to think about something like gender or something more wide ranging, like issues of power or simply just people. Newspapers are also an area that you will study for section B of component one, that being the media industries and audiences section. This section, you will study the mirror as a whole print product, website, social media feeds, fully digitally convergent media brand rather than just these three pages. So some context, the story on this front page and double page spread, I won't say that every single time, dates back to the scandal surrounding breaches of lockdown regulations by then Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his staff at 10 Downing Street. And in particular, the inquiry led by civil servant Sue Gray into what went on. Gray issued an interim report, essentially a first draft of her coursework, and this is what the Mirror reported on. Needless to say, her findings do not reflect particularly well on Mr Johnson. For some industry context on the Mirror itself, the Mirror is an example of a red top newspaper, aka a tabloid newspaper, aka a member of the popular press. Alone amongst popular newspapers, it is a left-wing labour supporting newspaper. Hence the highly critical viewpoint that it presents on these pages. The Mirror is owned by Reach PLC, a vertically and horizontally integrated conglomerate who also own, amongst other newspapers, the Daily Express and the Star, both of whom take a very different political stance to that of the Mirror. Very right-wing in the case of the Express, and more playful and anarchic in the case of the Daily Star. It was the Star, remember, who pitted uh, Liz Truss, Liz Truss's reign in number 10, against a lettuce. And, spoiler, the lettuce one. Like all newspapers, the Mirror has struggled to maintain circulation and sales in the online era. Its dwindling print audience is thought to comprise mainly an audience in the 45 plus, 55 plus age bracket and who fit into the social demographic C2DE. Please note, however, that does not mean that they are illiterate or can't read or just grunt as they look at pictures of celebrities in the daily paper. On to the text itself then, and we see the usual tabloid conventions, none of which, rather unhelpfully, people can seem to agree on a single name for, but it is vital that when you are writing about newspaper front pages, especially on scenes, for example, as I said, when you're writing about how they construct viewpoints and ideologies, that you absolutely plaster your response with terminology. We have the masthead, we have the tagline, the heart of Britain, explicitly restating the Mirror's brand image as a curring paper that sits at the heart of national identity. To the right, to the right, no, that just doesn't hit the same, does it? Uh, we have the pug or the ear or the skyline. You see what I mean about you know, multiple names for the same thing, uh, which promotes an item within the paper. In this case, part of an ongoing series celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. 
from this, we can infer a couple of things about the audience for the paper. Again, we can restate the fact that they are likely to be older, and we can also assume that they are monarchists. They are pro the royal family, in spite of the fact that this is a left-leaning newspaper. Most newspapers in this country have realised that with audiences constantly dwindling, you do not want to alienate that section of your audience and that section of the British public that are pro-monarchy. So we see very positive representations of the royal family in the mirror, just as we do in other national newspapers. Which takes us down to the main event, Boris Johnson and his catastrophic spell in Downing Street and his even more catastrophic hairstyle. Working our way down the page, we have the cross-heading grey report fallout. Fallout is one of those dramatic nouns that are a typical example of what we call journalese, the hyperbolic style of writing favoured by virtually all newspapers, but especially by tabloid red top ones. The splash, the main story, as mentioned, as you know, is about Boris and his lockdown busting bashes. A subheading even though it's above the banner headline, which we'll get to in a second, gives us the numerical facts using yellow to highlight the key figures, positioning the reader to be appalled at the scale of wrongdoing. And all these numbers are used to juxtapose the zero shame being screamed in the banner headline. Zero gets the yellow treatment, again, a form of emphasis and almost judgment on Boris Johnson. The image shows Boris Johnson, her typically askew, i.e. all over the place, nipping out to speak to the House of Commons. Is that a sly smirk playing on his lips? Well, it's definitely not a look of shame and contrition. Creating a binary is a smaller image of the then leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, who, the caption informs us, emboldened and in all caps, put in a crushing performance in the House of Commons. The report uses highly charged emotive language to position the reader. Johnson is described using the adjective shameless, and a further binary, an us versus them, is established between Johnson and the British people, described as diligently sticking to the rules as opposed to the shameless PM and his 12 parties. We also learn um, the description of Johnson as shameless is lifted from Keir Starmer, who described him in the House of Commons as a man without shame. Boris Johnson's shamelessness is also underlined by the caption, I'm not going, and his refusal to do the decent thing and resign his post. On to the double page spread, and that description of Johnson as a man without shame provides the headline for a two-page assault on Johnson's character. Starmer himself has written inverted commas, and the article that dominates the spread, um, a piece presented in the form of a letter from the leader of the Labour Party addressed to the British people and sustaining the us and them binary between we the people who made such noble sacrifices and the Prime Minister who, quote, took us all for fools. The letter form suggests honour and honesty and sincerity. And the pull quotes draw attention to Starmer's key demand that Johnson do the decent thing and resign. The juxtaposition of images, a hospital procedure performed by surgeons and nurses in mass and a champagne swigging Boris Johnson couldn't be any starker. As a sidebar, we get the viewpoints of a number of British people varied in gender, 
and ethnicity who all lost loved ones during the epidemic, all of whom condemn Boris Johnson. To the left of the spread, we get the Mirror's editorial or leader column, a place where the newspaper, although its opinion has been very clear throughout, explicitly states its viewpoint. The language is once again powerful and emotive. Johnson is described variously as an embarrassment, a charlatan and a ghastly stain. I mean, you might almost feel sorry for the guy. Almost. Underneath that, we get the newspaper's viewpoint on what it labels a vaccine fiasco. Another chance to take a jab, sorry, at the government. And underneath that, coming as a bit of light relief, well, as light relief as it can be, considering it's about someone who's just died, uh, we get a short tribute to an actor who had a long-standing role in the TV soap EastEnders. Yes, EastEnders is still going, but Dr. Leg, RIP, isn't. Two more items round off the double-page spread. One is a satirical cartoon that aims another shot at Johnson, um, this time as even global pariah Vladimir Putin refuses to take his phone calls. Finally, at the foot of the page, another report intended to form a contrast with the shamelessness of the PM, this time the quiet dignity of Hannah Brady, one of those who set up the Covid memorial wall in London. And the piece concludes by making reference to the fact one of the many Downing Street knees-ups involved singing karaoke to ABBA, informing us that, after today, how can he even try to go on? Yes, Boris Johnson has met his Waterloo. And I've arrived at the end of this video. Learn that front page, but by learning it, learn how to analyse any and every other newspaper front page that you might have to contend with on the exam. Hope you find that useful. See you again soon. Bye-bye.